Everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and I am getting all my gear together in the morning. I am heading out, going to Galveston West Bay. We're going to do a little kayak fishing, so I'm getting all my gear together. You know, have that rear camera mount now, forward camera, camera on my action hat. So hopefully, I'll have three cameras rolling. And I ran into a little audio issues last few times, so changed a couple of things. So hopefully, that's going to that that's that's going to help some and hopefully we figured out what the issues that have been occurring we have a strong outgoing tide all day long tomorrow so that's going to play a little bit of a role also we are really close to a full moon and that can really really make the bite tough i'm hoping that's not the case staying optimistic gonna get out there gonna hit the water in the morning thanks for coming back don't forget if you haven't subscribe yet to the channel please go ahead and subscribe like comment share and uh yeah Let's go fishing. We're gonna start the morning off fishing with a little bit of tanum. Man, these mosquitoes are terrible out here. But we're gonna start today fishing off with tanum gulp, got white swim mullet, and root beer chartreuse tail. A little chatter weight on there. One of the great things about fishing during low water conditions, you can really see what's under the water surface. You can see where the oyster reefs are, you can see where drop holes, drops are. You can see a lot of structure that normally isn't visible during normal or high, or high water conditions. One of the areas you always wanna target is in and around drains. It doesn't matter if the drain long, no longer has water in it, you still wanna cast around the entrance and around the edge of the drains. Just kind of fan cast a little bit, throw three or four nice casts. This drain always seems to hold a fish or two. So I am just casting in there, hopefully for a red. I'm gonna save a little bit of drain right here. I'm gonna find a fish or two around the drain. Even if they're the drain is kind of empty. Very small red. <laughs> Very small guy. But I was saying there's a little bit of drain right there. Even if the drain is empty, you can still find a red or a trout or a speck. I'm gonna speck the flounder hanging around. This guy's tiny, but still feels great, you know, to break the first I thought he might be a, a little speck, but little red nice little icebreaker i've been casting and casting throughout the morning with the tandem gope and i'm not getting the results that i really am hoping for so quick loop knot and i'm gonna put on this voodoo shad voodoo shad is kind of like my one of my go-to lures it's a search and destroy lure if you will especially for reds i have reds on the brain i also have a chatter weight on here 20 pound fluorocarbon the leader line and i'm gonna get after it and see if i can really intrigue a red to bite one of the things that I am incurring that is really plaguing this trip, not only is it the mosquitoes, but it's also the snot grass. It is that time of year. Almost every cast, I'm getting a lot of snot grass. So I'm almost just retrieving, straight retrieving my lure. I'm almost straight retrieving a little faster than what I normally would like just to try to keep myself out of the grass. This knot grass is killing me, but the reds are here. They're boiling all around me. I've had a real solid hit, but it just wouldn't hang on. It spit my hook. I'm really lathering on this pro cure. I'm trying to get a reaction strike. I'm just trying to get them to just get a reaction strike so I can set the hook. Just straight retrieving, fan casting this entire area. I'm surrounded by them. I just can't get them to cooperate. They have locked jaw, and that happens a lot. That happens a lot when you are around a full moon and they're feeding all night. But I'm not deterred. I'm going to fight the mosquitoes. I'm going to fight the snotgrass, and I'm going to hook into a fish. My line feels heavy again. Kind of feels like snotgrass. I'm just going to let the lure fall down to the bottom and set my hook. Oh, there we go. Yep, yep. It's flatty. It's a flatty. Got a flounder. Oh, come on. Dang net. 
Come on, come on. He ran at me a little bit, trying to hurry up and net it. Don't want to lose it. Finally have a fish on. I'm freaking out. Oh my gosh. I'm like a newbie. I'm a newbie over here. Oh yeah, there he goes. Nice little flatty. He might be legal. Get in the net. There we go. We got him. Got him on deck. Man, I missed that up. I try to miss that up as much as possible. That is too funny. I got the first shake jitters all over again. You know, I wasn't too sure if it was snot grass. I didn't know if it was uh, just hung on the bottom. It just it felt like a fish, and it wasn't a fish. And then I set my hook, and yeah, got this guy in voodoo shad. All right, so let's see where this guy's going to be at. He choked that little voodoo down. Oh, yeah, he's, he's short. Even with his nose bunched up against it, he's going to be under 15, just a little under 15. But, man, he hit that voodoo shad on the straight retrieve. Beautiful fish. Great little guy. Thanks for playing. I appreciate you, my man. Oh, my God, that was a tough bite. That was a tough, tough bite, but finally got one. You know, so that was kind of funny, you know, fishing for reds and, and caught a caught a flatty, caught a flatty little guy. But yeah, this Inger Bates, man, you know, the Inger Bates makes a lot of great lures, and the Voodoo Shad is is just one of the few of their lures that I really like. Fan cast in this area is still looking for a small red, slot red, maybe another flounder. Just fan casting and working the area. You know what that voodoo shad oh wait that's a little heavy yeah that feels like a fish kind of feels like a fish now check the camera camera's rolling all right let's set that hook fish on Fan casting this entire area, I still see a lot of boils, a lot of red activity. You know, it seemed like I got ran to a little school of flounder. So I'm still working this area, still straight retrieving, using that. Oh wait, yeah, that's a little heavy. Set to hook, set to hook. Mm, there we go, got another one. He's a little bigger, but he's still going to be under 15, I think. Yeah, we're going to let this we're going to let this little guy make it, but it is fun to catch him. <laughs> oh, that's a big flatty. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Oh my god, that's a big one. Oh my god, that is a huge one. Let's see if we can get him up here. Oh my gosh, come on. Go. Oh, oh yeah. Just cast with the other other one because I said, you know what, let me maybe it's maybe it's maybe the reds just aren't really picking up that voodoo shad like the way the flounder are. So let me let me put the ten coat back on. Let me cast with it. It's already on. Let me cast with it. With the other rod and uh See if I can get a red to react to that because they're not reacting. They're not really committing. They're kind of they're kind of bumping and nipping. They're not committing. So I just that was literally my first cast. And again, straight retrieve, not on bottom. Straight retrieve, and I just felt a solid bump. I wasn't even recording, but I just felt a solid bump. And then uh, this guy is is on nice, big, big, big flounder. Not, I mean, he's not huge, but compared to what I have been seeing, he's a he's very big. <laughs> oh my goodness, she's very big, rather nice female, nice big girl. Look at this girl. Look at that girl. She's big. She's a big one. She is 18 and a quarter. Yeah, a little a little over 18, maybe not quite a quarter. She's a little over 18. Pretty girl. Very pretty. Beautiful fish. Beautiful, 
beautiful fish. Well, that is going to do it today. You know, I, I I reviewed some of the footage and I'm still having the audio issues. I think I've narrowed it down now, so forgive me. Had to be a little creative in the editing process of this video. But you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you have to make lemonade. You know, life throws lemons at you, throws curse balls. You gotta be creative, gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, you know that voodoo shad was really working it. It was really doing its job um, The res just won't cooperate and they were there. They were out there. They just had lockjaw and that happens It happens you get around a full moon, you know the reds will eat all night and we've had very clear skies so they the the, the water has been lit and they can see the bait they're feeding and uh, Yeah I just don't want what I was throwing, but it's all good, you know. Had a good time, had a great time. Getting my gear together now, heading out in the morning, do a little boat fishing, jump with Captain Charles, jump in Captain Charles's boat. We're gonna go and chase some specks, chase some reds. Hey, you know me, I'm never gonna shy away from a flounder, right? But thanks again, guys. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, share, and until next time, I hope you catch me hooking up.